Um, I would <clears throat> like to give you a quick introduction to what we have been doing recently for uh, uh, Braille publishers in, uh, in Leiden. Uh, <clears throat> um, Decotype, <clears throat> sorry, Decotype has a bit of a misleading name, designers of computer typography. Actually, we started out with making computer models of script systems. And it produced uh, eventually uh, <clears throat> the first dynamic script technology that is bundled in a machine called the Advanced Composition Engine. And we are now uh, <clears throat> recently placing it into uh, Tech in a subgroup uh, called Lua Tech, where Lua stands for a scripting system, which enables uh, automated or semi automated typesetting of academic publications. Um, now, what we were what we turned out to be doing was not even reinventing typography but turning away from typography making script models and to make this work in the industry we had to take uh, resort to we could only make this work inside InDesign for which we made a plugin uh known as Tasmin and the plugin deals with this problem uh, the Arabic script in real uh, uh, everyday life looked very different, certainly in the 1980s when we started this, than anything you could see in typography. Uh, this is handwritten Nastalik in Cairo, just casual use, close up. And um, you see also the typical spacing issues. Um, we eventually managed to reproduce exactly this kind of script with its typical tight spacing and the uh, characteristic um, um, uh, what I call script grammar. And to, 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 to make you appreciate uh, what we did, I'm comparing inside InDesign uh, the same Unicode string uh, as rendered by various uh, open type uh, typefaces. So you see uh, uh, Indian uh, illegal uh, copies of the uh, Nastalik made by Linotype. I think they uh, scanned it and put it in a database, but anyway, they have no technology to space out the uh, uh, letter groups and the words in a way that is conform to the original ah. script it's supposed to um, to mechanize. So this is our Nestle Press. Uh, just a, that was just a quick impression on how it relates to real life script. That was only in a standalone application where uh, Adobe put the operating system. Excuse me, took the the, the full layout technology out of the operating system and placed it inside their own box so that uh, InDesign could work on uh, both Windows and Mac operating systems. Now generally the typography sits in an operating system in an operating system and therefore it, it keeps changing from machine to machine and from configuration to configuration. Here is a nasty example of the uh, calling card of the United States, the Voice of America, where they try to approach the strategically relevant area of, of Pakistan with completely failed typography, apart from the shapes, which are wrong, uh, the programmers uh, or the designers of this typeface haven't even bothered to implement the contextual behavior of uh, a number of letters that are not Arabic. And clearly this is what would have been the way to win uh, the hearts and minds. Uh, now, we were asked to put the uh, Quran on the internet for the opera for the uh, Omani government, and that, this kind of technology was useless because it uh, it's not reliable. And we were dealing with a text with zero tolerance for deviation. So we we uh, worked out a completely new strategy. We uh, distribute the text as Unicode characters, and we map them. We, sorry, we dress them up with scalable vector graphics for the actual shapes. So we do away with fonts. Uh, I, I, I spare you the details. You can find this um, 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 online. It's a public website. I will give you the URL later. Now, the focus of this whole pro project was um, the way we dealt with Arabic script. And that was based in turn on a, an approach to analyze it. For instance, the Nasr script, which is the model for, for all Arabic typography, is, it has been used for centuries in a very consistent form for all kinds of texts, but by zooming in on the Quran, you have the advantage of being able to compare the same text uh, in hundreds and hundreds of different versions or performances of the same uh, competence, to use the, the, the Saussure's 
uh, idea of, of, of linguistics. And use, so we basically use an analogy between uh, phonology and phonetics. We have graphology and graphetics. And graphetics is where the script grammar comes in. We also made an analysis <coughs> <excuse me. laughs> of early, very early Arabic scripts from Quran uh, pages. And by this kind of analysis, we can confidently claim that this word that we were not able to attest in, in the manuscripts that we studied, that it would have looked like this. And for the Quran online project, we used that, that uh, des design to uh, uh, render the headlines or surah headers. So here you see close up of surah headers, even omitting the dots because they were not part of the original graphemes, gambling that the average believer would uh, know the header anyway. Then we also made a computer model of the uh, uh, 1924 metal type that was used for the 1924 Cairo Quran. Uh, we gave it the new name uh, Amiri. Unfortunately, that name was copied by another group uh, 10 years later, but the real um, Amiri that we did is based on, a, on original research into the metal type, plus some subtle corrections where the curves of some pen strokes were bent to fit in the uh, constraints of uh, lines of metal type. Um, so that is a quick overview. We use them for a, a, a secondary function, the running headers on top of the pages, keeping track of wh where you are in terms of chapter. Then, the, as I said, the focus of the operation was script grammar, and let me explain what, that, what I mean there. Again, uh, you do that by first defining a style and then selecting the best quality and representative corpus of it and as much as you can, particularly to get the shape with the system right. For the calligraphic dimension, the actual type design, you focus in on the best quality uh, of shape. Now, there are many forms that are uh, in, in the Arabic uh, domain that are called nasr. For instance, there is the uh, Shehrazad formed by the uh, Summer Institute for Linguistics. There is the, this Amiri with a, with a slightly different spelling, with A instead of E, um, <coughs> that is also a computer model of the uh, Cairo 1924 Quran. <coughs> and here is our own nasr based on a, a direct research original research of the manuscript style. What these represent is basically something that I should, well, let me divert quickly on a thing that is possibly graphemically interesting. Um, in, in, in Roman numerals and in military ranking, there is this, this symbol system where you have a sec second lieutenant, a first lieutenant, a captain, a major, which would never be signaled like this, a lieutenant colonel, <laughs> Full colonel, colonel, brigadier general, a major general, lieutenant general, and a full general. And you see, like the Roman number numbering, your mind cannot process these numbers of identical, these large numbers of identical uh, repeated shapes. And in practice, the world develops something totally different. You, uh, in military ranking, uh, there is a, a technique to avoid any repetition of more than three identical shapes. So even where there are four necessary, they are actually grouped as twice two. And the same is true for the Roman numeral, as everybody knows, but I'm just pointing this out. And the relevance of this is for basic shaping of Arabic, there is one particular letter that has a very heavy uh, uh, functional load and uh, is, is therefore bound to be repeated more than three times. And there is at the bottom the naive uh, approach to it without script grammar. Then typography, which essentially tries to mimic or reproduce mechanically the system that was in the minds of everyone who wrote, not just the calligraphers, but also the scribes and everybody who was involved in writing Arabic um, uh, text. I'm transcribing this for the sake of simplicity with the capital letter B, the archive graphema. I used the capital like with analogy of the archive phony in phonology. If you have two <coughs> denticles, as these things are called, then there is already a specialized <coughs> initial form. There's only an initial form in the basic system that doesn't, that only acknowledges the initial, middle, final, and isolated positions. But in, in the basic shaping of Arabic according to script grammar, 
there is already a vertical elongation to avoid confusion with the letter C. And uh, if you have three, then you see uh, a specialized double denticle shape between two non denticles where the uh, elongated shapes, are vertical and horizontal, no longer count as denticle. Uh, then in four shapes, uh, five shapes, you see <laughs> the appearance of a specialized denticle uh, that is lowered. And uh, what you see in typography, in this kind, in this particular case, the typography of the Cairo Quranic has a wrong implementation of script grammar because script grammar is very, uh, um, uh, it's, um, <laughs> thrifty in using horizontal elongations. It keeps them as their number as low as possible. And then you see between two vertical elongations, you see the, the specialized um, uh, double denticle between uh, uh, neutralized uh, denticles, whereas the um, uh, typography cannot do it because it would double or triple the number of sorts you would need in a metal type. And the no script grammar approach doesn't even know that the system exists. And this keeps going, and now we end up with seven denticles, which would beg the question, um, isn't this a bit absurd? Uh, there, are, there are no words with seven identical letters, but of course, it's the dots that make them different, and it's very easy to, well, it's not too difficult to find a word that actually has seven denticles. Uh, for instance, this word, uh, uh, which in fact would look absurd in modern type if you do not apply the script grammar. This is now considered to be normal, but basically it's absurd. And now that was the basic shaping. Now, if you start the, uh, adding a new dimension where the same solution for the same situation or contextual situation, multiple solutions are available. The first kind of variation is elongating horizontally. You get this, which has, may have consequences for how to rise, how to elongate vertically because horizontal and vertical uh, elongation both neutralize the uh, denticle character of a uh, of, of one of these uh, what I call archive themes and uh, uh, influences the decision mechanism when to sh how to shape the whole comp composition. So, for instance, now if you if you elevate in other positions, you can see that the vertical elongations are moving around. Uh, I have some more examples here, and. Uh, this immediately brings the question, how do you know, how, how, how can you be so confident that uh, an apparently uh, intuitive writing system that is focused on calligraphy and beauty has such rigorous, uh, rigorous rules uh, that apparently nobody noticed? Well, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> for instance, <coughs> with a small algorithm, you can identify passages in the Quran that have a high density concentration of such tentacles. And here is uh, chapter 40, uh, verse 11. And I lift, if I take a passage that from a manuscript and contrast it with another manuscript, you can see how identical these manuscripts are. And at the same time, with a little effort, you can see how different they are. And they differ on the lateral variation. So these are not context driven, but aesthetics driven. It is the personal contribution of the calligrapher outside the rigorous script grammar system. And here you see some more examples and I'm, I'm of course navigating towards an elongation, uh, uh, an, an illustration of, what, of the point I'm trying to make. Here is a case of four denticles in a word. Here is also the same word in the same manuscript, same passage, different manuscript, same style, different passage, same passage, <laughs> different polygrapher. And here there is no elongation. And what you see is that the uh, decision to rise, uh, to, to elevate vertically had, has been affected by the presence of the elevation in the horizontal direction. And that is an illustration of what, how, how do we know? And if you build a machine, um, uh, you need more examples. And the ideal example is, to, is if you have a minimal pair. Now happens, there happens to be um, a pupil of Mustafa Izzet Effendi, whose hand was the model for the only and first successful Nasr typeface in the Ottoman Empire in the second half of the 19th century. And his pupil spent his life um, writing Qurans. And here you see uh, two pages of uh, facsimile editions of the same uh, uh, passage with 
the same line breaks, the same size, um, everything the same. And in fact, <laughs> the only difference is the width of the uh, of the pay of the text fader and uh, for the length of the line. And it exposes the brain function in the calligrapher how to deal with this uh, with the adjustments. And it squeezes out and exposes the script grammar that he has in his mind. And here you see all spread over the page his solutions to compress or to extend the line uh, within the constraints of the lateral uh, morphology of the script system. So the basic system makes sure everything fuses into single letter blocks. And the second system gives you multiple solutions in case you have uh, an artistic consideration or in this case a practical one but if you make a computer model of this and this is a kind of a frankenstein machine that implements the uh, consequences of our observations on on a couple of unicodes uh, that represent the um, arabic word hell <laughs> for archaic graphemes i drop the dots and you and i end up with some 48 different ways of shaping the same thing and in this particular case they were ordered in um, according to length which means that uh, this observation all of a sudden becomes an instrument of typography it's possible to make <laughs> it's possible to make subtle length adjustments in an automatically typeset line of arabic by choosing one in a vertical stack of alternatives that have exactly the same unicode string and therefore the same meaning but a different graphical expression within the same typeface and therefore the same style um, now, again, you could wonder why do you, why do, why do you think this is justified? Well, again, we look at the corpus of Arabic Qurans in the in, written in the Nasr style, and we can find these examples: uh, the word hell in this case, Jahannam, and we find different renderings within the same style in many cases. So here, uh, here are uh, some examples. And uh, if I harvest these together, you can see that they're all different. And recently, I saw uh, 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 an eBay uh, uh, auction of a manuscript that I immediately recognized of as one of the kind that, that would typically be part of the cor corpus that we analyzed. But I was <laughs> struck by the shaping of the word Jehannam in a way that I had never seen before. But our script grammar driven uh, selection system was able to mimic it. And uh, by the way, I cheated. I had one doublet here so I can free up some space and bring up the one that I found and that I had never seen before, but that would be possible to generate with the parameters that we create, that we use to build the synthetic NAS typeface generator. So that is, a new approach to typeface design, which in fact is computer modeling of script editions. And if you use that, that for typesetting, you get typographic design. Now, in this Quran project, which I use as a sample, we were looking at an Ottoman Persian tradition of proportioning page um, uh, frames. And we had an additional constraint that uh, we had to follow an Ottoman pattern where the last. Uh, element on each page would be the number of, of, an, of, of a verse. And we observed that there were many different, the verses are very inconsistent as, uh, as far as length is concerned. And there's one verse that is extremely long. And as such, it becomes the minimum, the minimum size of a page. And most Qurans, the present uh, 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 Medina uh, produced Qurans all take this verse as the calibrator for the book and by doing so they end up with 604 pages of text and here you see th that this was already done in the 19th century and our computer model of it in order to be able to to deal with this complex problem we created a paragraph format that automatically reacts to uh, uh, to the amount of text to, to make it fit the page like the calligrapher will do. So here I found on the internet a website, Tanzil, that has all 604 pages with the prescribed amount, amount of text. 
but with a static typeface. And what we have is a, a, a dynamic typeface. And as you can see, if there's a lot of text, if, if the text amount happens to be less, we, are, we keep being able to adjust the text using the mindset of the calligraphers that we try to analyze to accomplish an, uh, a, a, a constant uh, uh, amount of, uh, of density on each page in spite of the fact that the number of unicodes to be covered keeps expanding or contra and contracting. So we are just a few pages to show that problem. Then, um, so that's typographic design. Now, we brought this into, um, into a more open world like the tech world. And therefore we took Lua tech because Lua is a scripting system and also a, uh, an, an extension to tech that enables the use of more modern uh, uh, typographical technologies and that was the only way for us to to do this and all the observations that I just described um, uh, condensed into a variation preset management editor where you, we have a kind of random text you can also load your own text and a series of controls now the first thing by the way what it generates is a small file that you can attach to any amount of text to be set and what it contains is the instructions to shape the to do the additional lateral shaping that I just explained in my uh, introduction. So here you have, for instance, a spacing between the words, around the words, in other words, uh, horizontally and vertically, and internally, because Arabic uh, letters are continuous and discontinuous, and wherever there is a discontinuous letter, there is a spacing element inside a word. And we can control that separately. Then we have an alternation control. For instance, the letters meme and hat can be given variant shapes. Um, uh, we can actually um, we can also introduce elements of elongation according to script grammar. Not every letter can be la can be elongated, and not every elongatable letter can be elongated under all conditions. These are all elements that went uh, considerations that went into this this um, extended typeface controller with immediate visual feedback so that the type designer can see what the effect is of what he is doing. So you have a mass uh, elongation of zero. Um, uh, that means that 100% of the elongation goes to the no elongation value and still it's split equally between all three. But as soon as you reduce the non elongated uh, uh, element, then uh, all the other positions start to be filled in with elongations spread equally between um, three degrees of elongation. You can also introduce or exclude particular letters in this whole operation. So you end up with a system that can even rotate dots, uh, add the miniatures uh, to those letters that traditionally are undotted but can be marked with a miniature copy of themselves to uh, to block the possibility of, of people to uh, add or in, infer a dot where there should not be one, or as it is understood today as an ornament. Um, again, this produces a simple set. And now if I move away from, from NAS, uh, actually the overlapping between the letters can be controlled by the vertical spacing. Uh, so there's an, an enormous amount of precision in typesetting Arabic that is not available in conventional typography based uh, approaches to Arabic and uh, typography in, in particular, but also typ typography in general. Uh, the, the final swashes uh, and still being within the Nas. And as you can see on the left top, uh, you can even set the language because the, these constraints may change between languages. If you, if you ra rotate dots, you don't want to play with rotating dots if you're doing Urdu. So if you set this to Urdu, the interface removes uh, those uh, lateral or uh, uh, changes that might uh, have graphemic consequences. Uh, so now I'm moving towards other typefaces. It's still a lot of mass, uh, a lot of precision and detail for um, uh, type setters and uh, this is the, the master league in its default form with uh, the, the uh, 
spacing that Arabs would find comfortable to read. But if you change the spacing to tighten it up, you get the effect that is com that is familiar from where from Urdu, very tight spacing. And on top of that, we were able to mix in elongations like we did in the NAS context, strictly according to script grammar. And th those who have ever dealt with the uh, NAS static script might be aware of the fact that elongation in, um, in this kind of script is incredibly complicated. Um, technologically, it's it's um, it's simply impossible to do with typography-based uh, font model, script models. So that's why we uh, came with a completely new model. Uh, now I'm quickly going through this, and now I end up with the conclusion. This is a a, a sample test text that Brill provided us, run through Tech with this Lua extension, and it says the, and on top it says this is mixed text. The font family is Amiri. Uh, the preset, and that's what we generated with this editor before. The four letters are the constraint of the uh, um, open type based uh, font layout engine. And then the font size and then the space settings. And you see this is uh, the, the beginning of real typesetting using all these uh, new controls. Uh, here you see comp uh, the, the, this um, uh, actual text typeset with um, a random mix of features that would never be visible uh, in a normal uh, environment. So we, we are actually bringing uh, the concept of script modeling instead of typesetting or type design into uh, academic publishing. And uh, we do that with real publishers of Leiden and the uh, People who do the uh, semi-automated uh, typesetting are, are a, a club, uh, a company called TAT, T-A-T, Z-Werk, which means typesetting in the Dutch town of Utrecht. And the, uh, this whole Luatech system is the mind, the, the brainchild of a man called Hans Hagen, Hans Hagen in Dutch. So this concludes my talk. Uh, Decotype, that's, this, that's us. Uh, but basically, it's, it's a joint effort by Brill Publishers, uh, Tech, uh, uh, sorry, Tot uh, Typesetting in Utrecht and Equitite in Amsterdam. And thank you for your interest. Thank you very much, Thomas, for this uh, very nice talk, and it's really an extraordinary achievement. Uh, waiting for questions by the audience, I have uh, just um, a remark. You seem to imply that uh, what you call script grammar is rather on the graphetic level and uh, the characters are uh, graphemes. Yes. But, uh, uh, I think it's, it's not uh, so clear because uh, Graphemes are, can be defined as distinctive units of a system. So you need to be able to distinguish them. And uh, when time passes, then this distinction becomes uh, clear and uh, the system becomes functional. And uh, this is clear for disconnected scripts, but in Arabic, since letters are connected, the distinction is not only on the single graphemes, but also on sequences. And this uh, example you have shown with the seven bars is uh, if uh, some of the bars are higher, it is to avoid confusion with a scene. Oh, no, not just that. No, no, it's all, no, it's to, we, I, I deliberately <laughs> gave the example of military ranking and Roman numerals first, to point out that the human mind is not able to process more than three identical objects. You can't count them. You, if you give four, people are already hesitate. So <laughs> they block the repetition of four of three identical shapes to make sure that you can keep reading uh, the uh, um, the archigraphemic. Oh, sorry, you can keep reading the identicals. And an additional complication is that the letter scene happens to be constructed out of identicals as well. So where in military ranking you start bringing in a bar after three stars and in Roman numerals uh, when you reach the number four, in Arabic you have to in, you have to interfere already when there are three. 
but that is because of the confusion with the letter. But it's the basic law, it's the basic system. Okay, thank you. We and have the, and I have the, 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 the basic, the underlying system is based on a very rigorous <laughs> concept of graphemes, where the the units the units of writing are one thing, and uh, and then the the way they fuse, I would say they connect. That's that's the simplification. They, they do not connect. They fuse, and as a result, they can interfere with each other over long distances. If you have a seven, eight letter word and you change the first one, the last one may change as well. Mm -hmm. That is the way it, 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 we observe it. And that's why we built a completely different contextual engine than the conventional one, which can only deal with the typographic simplification of Arabic script. Okay, thank you very much. We have a question by Kevin Donnelly. Hello, uh, Tom, that was really interesting. Um, and it seems to me to be actually able to use the computer in the way that scribes actually use uh, ink. Um, is, is this available openly or is it just currently only being available to Brill? Um, it, this is actually <clears throat> based on a product that we made earlier as a plugin for Adobe InDesign. You uh, can right. drop me a line directly. You can also go to a company called Winsoft in France, like Windows software, yeah. Winsoft in France, and then add the search key Tasmim, which is the Arabic word for design. Uh, we didn't we didn't find a way to translate in design, so <laughs> Tasmim, <laughs> uh, written the popular way with double e instead of a long an, uh, an i with a macron. Yeah, Tasmim. Okay, thanks. So I don't see any other questions. So thank you very much, Thomas. Wa shukran jazilan, as you say. Um, ah, yes, I have another question by uh, Ben Young. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, thanks again, uh, Tom, for, for presenting this. Um, I, I remember seeing you present it some time ago, and it was really amazing then, and it's still really cool. Um, one thing I was wondering about was, um, do you think that this type of technology could possibly be extended into things like browsers and other, like, super dynamic bits of technology like i mean yes um, yes we have already yes i i am again i send you a question we have already an in-house operational version that could be on every browser tomorrow it's wow. just a matter of technically we, we we have managed to integrate this in half mm, oh wow that's amazing um, yeah, because that would be i mean did it, did it require changing half at all or was this uh, just something you could essentially plug in we have to well. Harbus is a public is an is open source, so we we analyze uh, the, the problem is that Harbus is essentially a straight jacket of 15th century thinking about typography. So we had to cut a lot of arms out of and legs out of our system. <laughs> we have a real nasty insect with many interface controls, but within that context, we can still uh, produce much more than uh, than uh, an average open than a regular open typeform. Wow. Oh yeah, that's really amazing. Hopefully, I can. Hopefully, we'll see to start seeing that um, being extended onto uh, like platforms like uh, browsers and that kind of thing sometime soon. Yes, yes. We are also and and for the moment, um, in order to um, proceed and put the uh, oh, I, I owe you the URL to the uh, web Quran. Mm -hmm. the, the easiest the easiest way to find it is to search with the word Moshaf, which is spelled M for Mike Uniform. Sierra Hotel Alpha Foxtrot M U S H A F Mushaf mm -hmm. and then Muscat, the capital of Oman. Yep. Spelled Mike Uniform Sierra and then Charlie mm -hmm. Alpha Tango Muscat. These together give you a lot of hits that discuss this project, but it also the top hit is the Arabic URL. If you click on it, you get a mm -hmm. website. <laughs> with three view modes. It opens as a website. If you click in the blue margins of mm -hmm. the design, you get the ebook mode. And if you click in the white of the text, you get the editor mode. And in the editor mode, if you mouse over, you will see that uh, the text comes to life. And if you click on any light, it, it changes color from black to blue. If you mm -hmm. click on any, on the moment it turns blue, it opens up a panel of a logically 
organized set of lateral change parameters. It's a dynamic interface, uh, in a menu. If you make a choice, then everything else is recalculated on the basis of your choice. And the recalculation runs in the Arabic script direction. So you, you're oriented from right to left. On the right, you get a control column. Then you get the, the uh, column of elongations. If you choose any of them, and that elongation is, is going to be used to rebuild all the columns to the left of that. That's a quick If you double click on it, it implements on the text and the whole, the whole text is recalculated on the background using the same logic on the, on the cloud. And if you press the letter P in this mode, it generates a PDF. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, it's a publishing system. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is like a small bridgehead of a completely different approach to, to web publishing. Mm -hmm. It happens right. to be the Quran because the Quran has such um, uncompromising requ requirements that there are, there are, there's no way to, of cutting corners. So all of a sudden we are forced to raise the level of precision of web publishing. Oh, this is this is really amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Tom. I really uh, it. All clarity, we reached the level that the authorities in Cairo of the Azhar University verified it and gave it, gave it their imprimatur, the so-called ijazah. Wow. <laughs> Mumtaz, Danny. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I have a question by Amani Rashdan. So he's asking whether we could do some kind of reverse engineering and apply your script grammar to Arabic calligraphy recognition or... Uh, uh, good point. I, I, I recently gave a lecture about this in, uh, in uh, uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, it's not a matter of reverse engineering, but it's, it's, I see what you mean. Um, um, yes, and <laughs> I'm looking for anyone and party to to, the, to push this idea forward into a real, a real project where um, um, I would say my, my lecture was ba basically uh, provocative saying, how can you expect to get results with um, optical character recognition when you keep thinking about Arabic in terms of uh, Western typographical simplifications, a kind of compromise which works if you print text, but will not work if you try to read texts that are not aware of any Western uh, uh, misunderstandings of the way the script is stuck. That must have been a very interesting lecture, so I would appreciate if you could share it with us. Mm -hmm. Well, that lecture, um, we, we ha it was not recorded, but we have, an, uh, I did this together with Alicia Gonzalez of Hamburg University, a computational a linguist and Arabist. And last year we have been doing a, a number of things. Also, uh, because another question that I didn't get is, doesn't your script grammar and as, uh, and let's say graphetics, graphemes and archive graphemes approach uh, create a completely different reality for searching in Arabic? Thank you for the question. <laughs> and the answer is yes. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> So there are no other questions, so thank you very much, Thomas.